Well, hello everyone. This is Robin Carter, and I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator out of Flower Mound, Texas. And today I'm here to share my final Garden Meadows Mega Class uh, samples that I've made. So if you've missed any of the other two videos, you can go to my YouTube channel and click on videos and find them in the last week. So I'm going to finish out the next 12 cards. So this class makes a total of 24 cards, and that's why I've called it my mega class. But before we begin, let me give a special thank you to those of you who have subscribed to my channel. Welcome back. And if you're new to my channel or have watched a few of my videos but have yet to subscribe, I would really appreciate if you would hit the subscribe button below. So let's get started. As I said, this is my Garden Meadow Mega Class. And this set came out in November as an online exclusive with some gorgeous DSP. So I've pretty much based this class on this suite of products, which include the DSP as well as some ribbon. Uh, let's begin. So um, I'm going to start with this uh, card. This DSP right here. So I like to show it first. So if you're following along, you can pull that out. Now I've already shared some basic uh, samples of using this design, but it's one of my favorites with six by six paper. So what we're going to do is we're going to trim this down to five and a half. So let me grab my trimmer. Okay. And you can decide where you want to trim it. If you want to trim it at from the sky or from the flowers. Uh, this doesn't trim off a whole lot, so I think I'm gonna go with the sky here. And again, with my Trimmer Basics, if you're cutting up, you want your paper on this so it can uh, have a straight edge there and it won't move. If you put it at the bottom of your trimmer, you wanna pull down. So I've shared that in my previous videos. Now, this would be a great strip either side to use for sentiment. So I, I keep those in a little scrap envelope that I have over here. Uh, by the way, the envelopes that I'm storing these in are a part of what I call my favorite thing. So this is like a five by seven envelope that I've stored uh, my goodies in. I also have these that are like seven by nine. I have lots of white scraps in here, as well as they store my pre-cut card bases and memories and more kits as well as paper pumpkin kits. You may have seen uh, those used in my videos there. Bring our paper back. Okay, now that we've cut it to five and a half, I'm gonna cut it right in two. So that'll be at the three inch mark. Let me bring this down in view. And by the way, if you have uh, this trimmer and you're always cutting this way, if your blade gets dull, then you can uh, turn it around and use the other side. So just keep that in mind as well. Okay, so like I said, I have my goodies in here. And so these are the cards that we're going to be making. Um, I have two pre-cut and scored pieces of uh, thick, very vanilla cardstock. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this all the way on the right edge, both pieces. I'm going to use my multi-purpose glue it gives me some wiggle room if I don't get it on there exactly straight. Plus it helps control the amount of glue that I'm using when I put it in this fine tip glue bottle, which is also a part of my favorite things. If I didn't mention my favorite things are listed in the video description of this video and many other videos. They're in, just click on the more information when you get to my videos and there'll be a links to to um, all my favorite things. Okay, when I'm putting it edge to edge, I like to hit it there and on the bottom so I can make sure it's centered. Okay, and I'm gonna do just like I did on this card. And I have a piece of very vanilla that was one and a quarter by five and a half. And I've already put some ribbon on here and I'm gonna show you uh, on this one how I do that. So I take some tear and tape and put it across the top here. Okay, and then I'm gonna peel off the backing. Okay, and then I get my ribbon and I'm just gonna put it straight on there by looking edge to edge. And hopefully I'm not getting my hair in 
in the video. Okay, so that gives me a little, and this is also a ribbon saving. You don't have to twist it all the way around. I'm hoping these are sharp enough. I've misplaced my ribbon scissors, but those work. Those are just some old scissors I found. And then I put some tear and tape on the back as well. And then I just fold this over. Make sure that none is peeking out on the other side. Okay, and there we have our ribbon and it's not gonna move. So let's attach that to our card right here. Give that a good press. Again, I'm gonna use the Tombow Multi-Purpose Glue. Now, um, I don't think I mentioned, this is embossed with the Distressed Tiled 3D Embossing Folder, which was new in the last catalog, the last mini catalog. It's right here. I really like the pattern that it gives. So I thought I would bring that into this suite as well. I've only brought in two embossing folders and that's this one and the Exposed Brick 3D. Okay, and now, like I said, you can use uh, this sheet that you may have saved, that we saved from before, and we can put the sentiment on there. So I'm gonna do the same happy birthday sentiment. I'm gonna get out my Stampin' Pierce mat because these are photopolymer stamps that they don't have any cushion on their own. We need to bring that in. I'm gonna use the same uh, different colored piece. I think it's pretty for this card. So let's get out our Tombow multi-purpose glue. Tom, no, let's get out our Momento Tuxedo Black ink pad. Excuse me for that. It's, it's really hard to talk and do cards. If, if you've never tried it, can you give it a try? All right, and I'm gonna leave it so I can flag it just like I did the other one. So let's wish me luck and I get a good image and it's straight. Okay, that's pretty good. I like that. Let me close up the ink so I don't get it all over me. And then I'm going to get my trimmer again and just trim this edge straight. And then I'm going to just manually flag. I'll do it up here where you can see. I know I tell you to always have a flat surface, but for this little cut, I'm going to hope that works. Okay, so there's still plenty of room on this strip if you wanted to save it for Another sentiment. I just like the look that this gives versus a vanilla or white label. Oh, excuse me. I totally hit my phone wire when putting up that mat. So sorry about that. I uh, hope it didn't make you dizzy. Okay, so I'm going to manually flag this. And what I like to do is I'll just on the back mark a middle of this, which seems to be right there. Okay, and then I'm going to take my scissors and submit this right along there. I've never actually hit the camera like or the camera wire like that. So something new happens just about every video. Whoops. I want this less of a point. Let's make that not as steep as a, of a flag. There we go. I like that. And then I'm going to put this on here. I'm going to go ahead and use dimensionals on this. We have all my little dimensionals. This was an old wood. Uh, when our stamps, we could choose wood mount. Uh, this is an old uh, clamshell box that we used to use. So I put those to use when I converted all my wood mounts to clean. And I do have a video on that. That was one of the first videos I ever did. So um, it's down in my, way down in my videos. But it saved me so much room and I put all those clamshell boxes to use. I've used them to store my blends and my ink spots and things like that. So right, let's put this happy birthday on there. And then all we need to do is add a bird or a hummingbird using the adhesive back dragonflies and birds. Now, last I checked, these were unavailable still. I didn't check today or this 
last Friday, but hopefully they will be in soon. Let's see, I have several of these birds to use, so let's put him flying up in the sky. Did he lose his backing? Let's see. Nope, that was just me. So very simple, but nice um, that that bird adds the same thing. So I'm going to flip this over because it's my other card. And it did the exact same thing, just with a different sentiment. So we can glue this together really quickly. I don't have to explain much. At the end of this video, I'm going to pull all the cards out and show you all of them. Again, this uses just a quarter of the Meaningful Flowers Kit. Now, of course, I've created double because I've done this video with you. Feel for which side. That one's pretty even, but I'm going to say this side is just a hair bigger. But I love how this paper does all the... Uh, work for you. You just let the paper be the star of the show. And I already have one of these done that I showed earlier. So let's put that on here as well. So for the rest of the cards, I'm, I'm going to use this dot design a lot, but I do have another window one that I want to show. And I shared in my very, very, whoops, first video <laughs> how to get a straight window. So, um, be sure and check that out if you're having trouble getting a straight window. Okay, and then in here, I already have a sentiment. Now, I've already pre-stamped this one, and I did choose a different label. This one is from the Nested Essentials. It has stitching around the side. And this one is from the All That Dies. I just thought I would use a circle to give it a little more interest since all this is rectangular. Let me get out my dimensionals again. I have a little collection of partially used ones, so let's use some of those up. All right, one. I think three is plenty for this label. I'll place them in a triangle set, um, type of pattern. Okay, I probably should have made sure it wasn't going to hit the ribbon, but I think we're going to be okay. All right, so back there, and then let's bring in another bird or dragonfly. So it's time to use up some of these. Okay, I think we're going to have him flying in to the trees there. Okay, so that is one set of cards, so we can set this aside. Let me put my unboxing folder up. You know what? Let me put them back in. Oh, I was going to do one more thing to add a little interest because that was kind of blah. I <laughs> pre-colored a little flower patch that's from the stamp set. It's this one right here. So I pre-stamped, die cut, and colored this. I just thought we should add a little something else to this card. Good thing I wanted to put that in there. I had one thing remaining. Put the glue on the label. Okay, just adds a little flower patch for some more detail. Okay, now let's put these away. I'll try to stay organized here. And then we'll put them in my bucket that I have all the other finished ones. Okay, next we're going to use this sheet of DSP. Now, when I first created this one, I cut out the center so that that was in the center. I think I'm going to try and not do that this time. I'm actually going to cut from here and then maybe uh, later be able to create something with that paper or put it on the inside of the envelope. So again, we want to trim to five and a half. Now this time I'm going to trim from the flowers because I don't want to lose any more trees that are already extending off past the seam here. So again, I'm going to trim that at five and a half and I, I do love the back of that paper. I think that's real nice. So Oh, you know what? I didn't want this five and a half. I wanted it five and three eighths. But let me go ahead and cut my whole piece because this is going to be one whole card front. So I want that one. I think I do because that has the most sky. So let's cut there. Save that. So that's it for. I need to trim this one to five and a quarter, not five and a half. 
I want a little bit of my card to show. Okay, so here's the one I did where I centered it, and I just thought we'd have a different look. I also didn't mention that the first time I made these cards, I did them all on white, but I started using the vanilla on them, and I really love how the very vanilla stands out. So I'm going to give that even more of a border than I did the white there. And that was by trimming it to five and a quarter by four inches. So isn't that pretty? I just love that side, but we're letting the pretty scenery be the star of our show. I think that's a mixture of copper clay and something. Which I'm really enjoying the new in colors. I'm ready to use Moody Mauve and stuff like that. So I think I'm going to use that in my next bundle class that I'm going to work on after I finish this paper pumpkin. Okay, and then I have also pre-stamped a label. Now this is only one stamp set that I've brought in and it's called the Courage and Faith stamp set. Its item number is 161500, and it is in the annual catalog. So we're going to use this label to adhere to our card. I think I'm going to put it on this side. That way we get trees and sky this time. And I'm going to use a little bit of the ribbon here. So let's see how I like it. I'm going to do it this way where the flags are going off the paper. Get these scissors again. All right, and then here's what I do for ribbon saving. So I cut that, and then I'm going to get my tear and tape. This is one left over from a paper pumpkin. And I'm going to put it on the back here. So I just fold it the way I want it to go. And then I can stick it on the label. Okay, and then you know, let's separate that a little bit. All right, and then I do the same thing where they're coming off the label there. I always have to find where this tear and tape starts and stops. That's it right there. All right, let's just put a little right there. And I'm going to cut two little flagged end pieces. So just about an inch. Then we can have that coming off of this end. I like the flags going in together. All right, so there we go. Let's, again, put this on with dimensionals, add a little interest to our design there. I have partial dimensionals all over, so hopefully I'm going to use them up uh, during these last few cards. I do have quite a few to do, so I, I did do a lot of pre-stamping and coloring so I didn't use a lot of the same layout, so there was no reason to recreate the wheel. You can always go refer back to my first and my second video if there's a different layout that I'm not explaining as well on this video. Okay, so let's put that here. And that gives me room to put a bird here. And I'm going to lose those if I don't watch it. One bird coming in like that. So I like the I like the look of that. And again, this time I uh, this one I used the center of the paper. This one I used the left hand side. And I may make another card using this at some other point. But I really like that design. So we'll save that for that one. Okay, so that is the second card for this video. Pretty quick and easy. Oh, again, I have a little flowered patch. But I've already colored to match these, so let's put that on there. Blue on the label. Okay, 
There we go. All right, back in here these go. Okay, now my next card, let me put this in my scraps pile so I don't lose all my little scrap and keep my place a little tidy. I have some leftover pre-cut pieces here. Okay, so my computer died, but I'm going to merge these two together, and so we're going to work on our next card. So I don't know why it happened. It's plugged up and everything. Anyway, this is the uh, next sheet of DSP we're going to work with, and we're going to make a window like we've done in previous cards. So let's get started with this one. So for the window, I've already marked or know that you need to cut this at like 475 so that it fits within the window. Now I'm just going to cut here. If you know for sure you just want to use like more of the center, you can cut a little from both sides. You just want your total finish size to be 475 tall. Okay, and then we're going to cut this at in half at three. Now you want to cut it right at three because three inches fits just within that window. I do like that it does fit. That way we're able to get two very pretty cards from the same thing. Now I don't have a new card bases. Let me grab my thick vanilla. Okay, this is how I store all my card stock. And this is my thick berry vanilla. I've already pre-scored all of these in here. So I can just get out one. And this way it shows you how I make my card bases. So like I said, I've already scored down the middle here at four and a quarter. Maybe the bumpy side shows better. Let me get my trimmer and I'm going to trim this right in half at five and a half. So right at the half and five and a half inch mark and cut the whole thing. So now I have two card bases for this one. And I just so if this is where the bumpy part is, you want to fold it this way into the bumpy part. You get my bone folder and burnish that more flat. Same thing with this one. Okay, now in my very first the part one of this class, I showed how to get a perfectly straight window. So I'm not going to take the time to go over that because I want to get through all my cards and show you, uh, highlight all of the, all 24 cards. So uh, also be mindful of the embossing folder. If you want your brick up and your mortar down, you want to emboss this window piece uh, face down. I do cut first and emboss second. So you might want to keep that in mind as well. So here's how I adhere this. So I just, Line that up where it's going to be centered in my card. Now the window will go on dimensionals. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, then I get my multi-purpose glue. And I lift that up. Put a little adhesive down. Oops, <laughs> lift this up. And glue that down. All right, so then I'm just going to show you how I would finish this card without taking the time to put it on dimensionals right now. So that would be on dimensionals. And then this one, of course, I'm not going to have another fence either. So since it died, I already used my fence on my other one. I caught that my computer died after I did that. Anyway, I will cut another very vanilla fence to put here. I have... Uh, my rain boots. Now these I did uh, mossy meadow to kind of match with the trees. So what do you think of that? I don't know. There wasn't much yellow in this, so I decided to do something different. And then I have a basket of flowers. Now the basket, again, the basket is in bronze blends, and I've used mossy meadow and melon mambo. And then I'll just have a nice thinking of you sentiment up here and the birds there. All right, and so then I will do the same thing with this one. 
We'll just go through this one real quick without gluing everything. So that's going to go like that. And then I have one of the all that dies, and that was the all that die, that I stamped the basket right on the bottom and colored it with the same bronze, uh, Mossy Meadow, and Melon Mambo, and the Hello from the kit. And I'll just put that there and then add a bird. So I love the blueberry bushel much better than the balmy blue. Which one do you like better? So let's put this away and go on to our next card. Okay, now in, <laughs> this is where the video, I, I saw that it died after I finished this card. So get out this piece of DSP and I didn't feel I needed to recut a whole new piece. Um, as this is much of the design I've done a lot, that's real easy. So you want to cut your paper at five and a half, and I cut off the sky here. Is this the piece? Yes, that's the piece. So I cut it at five and a half, and then I've cut it right in half at three again. And then I have this nice uh, one and one quarter by five and a half piece that I uh, dry embossed with that same distressed tile embossing folder and I added the ribbon like I showed you in the first one. So this is the first card I've already done and to finish that one off I have the same all that die like I showed in the last card that I'm going to put right here but I'm not going to cover up any of the path. I prefer I love the path. I don't, <laughs> I don't know why Sometimes you just find things in the images that you like better than the others. So this time, so I make sure I don't get any on the uh, ribbon. I just, I'm afraid it won't hold as well, or it might pull. I'm going to put those here. Finishing up this set of dimensionals. Anyway, so I'm going to have a nice set of uh, double this. 48 cards since I made some and I'm remaking for you guys. They're so pretty. Okay, so then we can just add the birds whichever direction you like and we'll be done with that one. I'm going to save time and not do that. Okay, now this one I do like. I do like this design with the wheelbarrow. Let me feel to see if there's one side. I think it's that one. So there's not a lot going on up here. I don't know what that is. Uh, I got it off. Probably a little bit of glue, dried glue. All right, so I put my multi purpose glue there. Again, I'm going to put it on the side. And to make sure it's flat, I tap it against my table, side, and top, bottom. All right, I've already pre-done the tile with the ribbon like I showed at the beginning of the video. Again, if you're catching this for the first time, um, be sure and check the first part where I go into more detail of when I make these cards, part one and three. They're all on my YouTube channel. Okay, and then we're going to get to the wheelbarrow. Now, this is the largest of the Stylish Shapes dies, and I've already stamped the Happy Birthday from the kit here. And then you use this little stamp that's in the kit to create like a little dirt or mud <laughs> path for your wheelbarrow. And then, again, I've already pre-colored this wheelbarrow. Now I cheated and I used a Sharpie on the wheels and the handles. And then I did the wheelbarrow in gray granite. Got sticky fingers. The leaves again in mossy meadow. I used melon mambo and then a fresh freesia up here for the uh, stems. My kitty may want out. I shut the door because my husband's watching basketball and he's very into his basketball. So <laughs> If he meows to get out, I'll go let him out in a second. He just got out of his chair. All right, let's set that there. All right. This little string, I 
should attach it, but I don't. And then we're just going to put that up with dimensionals. I'll go ahead and do that so I don't lose it. And let's see, one needs to go about there. Let's put some here. I love how he gets so vocal, like they can hear him when he watches his basketball. All right, so let's put that down here. If I see, I think I need another one to support that there. Okay. So there is that those two sets of cards with that DFP. Um, I will probably put a bird or dragonfly in the sky there, but what do you think about that? Oh, and I forgot the little uh, trowel. Trowel. <laughs> trowel. Uh, I forget the name of this little gardening shovel. Um, it's in my PDF. By the way, if you purchase this bundle for me, um, you will receive the PDF with full instructions of how uh, I made these alternatives as well as the pictures of the finished cards and the DSP used for that one. So he's trying to get out. Let me go crack the door and let him out. Okay, I think we're, uh, we have two more. We're going to boogie along. <laughs> okay. So for this one, you want this sheet of paper. Isn't that gorgeous? Now, I think I'm just going to, uh, because, let's see, we're going on 30 minutes here, and I want to review them all. Now, the only difference is when you cut this paper, I think this time I'm going to cut from, a, um, you still lose a lot of this uh, scenery here. Let's cut this and see how it works out. So it'll be 475, 4.75 since we're putting it in a window. And then three inches. I think the curve of the window covers this up. So let's see how it, how it works out. Okay, I have those pre-cut and embossed. And I have a thick white window. So we're going to do these both the same. I'm going to work with this one and see if it's just the curve of the window it covers that up. I do love the deep, deep colors. So I thought for contrast, I would use just the very vanilla window. Okay, yes, it does. It's just the curve of the window. But since that covered up so much scenery, I thought the wheelbarrow, colored wheelbarrow, would look good there. And then I have a little patch of flowers that I've pre-done to put over here. So that would be that finished card. Oh, as well as the sentiment, which I think I have those as well. So same layout, same design, just giving it a different look with the paper. And then also with this one. I love that this one's my favorite of the little path. So we'll just steal him <laughs> so I can show you what I did for this one. Put that over. Same wheelbarrow, although this time I use a watering can and put the sentiment over here. And uh, note on my watering can, I put a little blue at the top here to make it look like there's some water in it. I thought that was cute. Now you can do that or you can cover that up. Like I've said before, I really wish they would have cut out that center of where the wheelbarrow legs are. I think that would have added a lot. Now this one, you, can you see the wheelbarrow was die cut in white and this one in vanilla? So um, to be all the same, I did this one in vanilla. Is there one you, does it matter to you? Do you like the same color? Do you like how this one may stand out a little bit more? You let me know. So there is that card. So those are very much the same 
So I'm just going to put those in here. And I think we're down to my last one before I can do the final review of all the cards. Is this one. Now, again, I did that same very simple layout. So let's cut our paper. It uses this one with all the nice yellow flowers. And I'm going to cut from the sky again. I think it's going to be too close. I don't think so. And again, I have a nice piece we could use for the birthday sentiment if you want more of those. And then I need to trim this in half. So I often don't like working with six by six paper. I, I don't know why. I just have this middle block of wasting paper, <laughs> but um, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with this one. So I have my two thick card bases. We're gonna put these down on the side. I already have some paper pumpkin things in mind, so I'm looking forward to sharing those in my next video. So again, if you're not subscribed to my channel, I would greatly appreciate your subscription. I'm hoping, I've kind of set a goal, it's kind of big, to double my subscribers to have um, 5,000 at the end of the year. So if you can help be a part of that, I would greatly appreciate it. I know that's a kind of a, I don't know, is, is that a bold goal? But it's good to set goals, and if you don't meet them, then you try to figure out what you can do better to meet your goals. All right, same one and a quarter inch of the distressed tile side. Now, I just I just like how that grounds the cards. Um, as a comment I got in one of my paper pumpkin videos, I love it, and I shared it with my group, and we're like, oh, she should be a part of us. It's so us. She said she liked the white part. It gave um, a place for her eyes to rest. And or, oh, I'm not thinking of the exact wording she used. Oh, let my eyes breathe is what she said. So here is your section to where your eyes can breathe. And there's not just so much busyness on the card front. I love that comment. So maybe that's what I like about it. It, it really does uh, help separate the pattern out. Gives you something else to look at. Let your eyes breathe. All right, I should have wrote down her name to give her credit for that. I'll share that in my next paper pumpkin video exactly who that was. Thank you for watching and commenting. Okay, by the way, the best compliment you can give me is to one, subscribe if you are not subscribed, and two, uh, share and like this video. Uh, I try to read all my comments and reply, so whoops, comments are greatly appreciated as well. And if you have any questions, always leave those in the comments. And I'll do my best to answer them. All right, got to draw another dimensional section. Here's one. I'm going to cut this in half. Okay, by the way, if the birds and uh, dragonflies are not available, I think the brushed brass butterflies would be just as pretty there. I think I need another one right there to hold that side up. There we go. And uh, these I decided to do both in vanilla. As you can see, this one I did in garden green. Which do you like better? Do you like the strike of color or more of a uh, subdued look? And this one, I did the same with this here. And I did a little flower patch here to give it some interest. So let's glue that on. 
I'm guessing my computer got too hot for some reason and died before because it's been plugged up this whole time. I'm just going to quickly put this on as well. I do like how I put the dragonfly here on the label. This is a stitch, uh, oh, stylus shapes stitched circle. And I thought I would just stick with this all that to give it a little more interest. Got a little something on there. Maybe I'll put my dragonfly there to cover that dot. So these are the last two cards. And when you have a section like this, you can choose to line your inside of your envelopes. Just cut it to about five and a half and you can stick it in uh, so it shows or you can stick it on the flap either way. But now I want to go over all of them really quickly. I don't think I'll be able to display them all on my workstation here. But I have them in protective sleeves and I'm just going to run through them. So the very, very first one we did, this is another layout where it's cut into three. And then I mounted it with Mossy Meadow and put it on a full backing of the folder. And this is the other side, done like much of the design we've done before. Here was the first time I did it with the white. With the white label. Okay, the next card I did were these. Now, these I kind of like in the white. It just uh, stands out a lot. But when I did them the second time, I did do them in, in um, very vanilla. And they're right here. Now, the one thing I changed was I put the ribbon going across the seam. I like how that uh, separates the, gives a good separation between those labels. But so anyway, I like both of them. I think they're both pretty. It, it won't be like I'm going to throw out <laughs> the white ones just because I switched to yellow. Okay, again, this one, again, I think looks fine in the yellow. This one I did not emboss. So which do you like? The embossed blue, and this is blueberry bushel. Here they are. I put them both in one. Same design, just used all vanilla and did my... uh shapes in vanilla. Okay. Then, yeah, you know what, I'll put those in there in a second. All right, then did the ones with the scallop contour dies. Now the first time I did it, actually all three of these come from the same sheet of DSP. I did it in this crushed curry to bring out the flowers. And this one, I do kind of like this one in the white. But um, I didn't really care for the crushed curry. So I did my next one in vanilla. I mean, excuse me, fresh freesia. And this is from a leftover piece from the previous cards that I put to use. But here you can tell a stunning difference. I guess I need to add a butterfly there. And then here is this card in, I'm trying to keep the shiny from shining too much, in vanilla. So like I said, they, they have just a little different feel to them. I, some of them, the vanilla really gives it a rich, uh, soft, nice look. All right, so there's that one. And then we did this one. Now, this would be good if you just got the paper um, and wanted to make this. Of course, you wouldn't have the basket. But here's a good layout that I like to use, oh, use as well. Excuse me. I was not there. Now, this, these I didn't change at all. So it's just the same cards that I did here. I did. So I did go in and add a little flower patch there. And on this one, I put the basket. I guess that's what I changed. I did the same thing, just colored the flowers differently there. I must have cut the, cut the paper at a different angle. See, here I have more sky than I did over here. Okay, this one I just created a whole card front. And I used that um, Courage and Faith stamp set. This one was in white. And this one is in vanilla. 
And then this was left over from that side of paper. Here it is in white, which again, I, I like that, except it doesn't match the ribbon. And here it is in vanilla. And so then we have our cards I just made. So we have these two cards. Well, you'll have one of each. <laughs> okay, we have this card. This shows in the white. This shows in the vanilla. And this one that I didn't quite finish because I wanted to get to the one. And this is in balmy blue, and I think it's fine. I just really like the blueberry bushel that I'm going to finish those out. That's also with the white labels, and these are going to have all vanilla. And again, pictures of these will be on the PDF if you uh, purchase this bundle here. So those are the same. Okay, here's this set. Just need to add birds to that. And our last set here, oh no, next to last set, I think, is this one. Now, again, that, the only difference I'm going to do is it's going to have a vanilla wagon and watering can. So I didn't want to take your time to show the same layout i think you get the idea and then the last one which is what we just did is this uh with the yellow flowers so thanks for watching everybody i hope you're enjoying uh some different videos of me using bundles it's something i'm going to challenge myself to do this year i already have one in mind uh for next month that i will be doing uh after the paper pumpkin of course so again, if you like this video, the best compliment you can give me is to subscribe and leave a comment, share this with your other fellow uh, crafting friends, and give me a thumbs up. So until my next video, I hope you've enjoyed this class using the Garden Meadow Suite. So I do have information in the description box of links to my favorite things, and I do need to mention that I am an Amazon affiliate. So when you use those links, I get a few pennies back at no cost to you. Um, thank you for those who have used it or if you plan to use them. There's my husband yelling at the best ball if that comes through. I don't know. And then um, also uh, when I get my blog post done, now that all the cards are done, I'll do a blog post showing still photos. And I'll also have a list of all the supplies used. So thanks for joining me today. Again, an uh, please subscribe and my next video will be using the January paper pumpkin, which is a wonderful kit. So until my next video, everyone have a great day. Bye bye.